Hi, this is Frank the Tutor. The most common mistake I see students make when they're taking a derivative is they forget to use the chain rule when they need it. In this problem, they might see y equals something squared, and I know that when y equals x squared, the derivative is 2x. So maybe when y equals red box squared, the derivative should be 2 times the red box. And then they stop there, which I'll indicate with this lightning bolt. The argument certainly seems reasonable, which makes it all the much more frustrating than the first time a teacher says to you, no, you're not done, you have to keep going. But the chain rule requires that you continue by saying times the derivative with respect to x of whatever was in that box. In this case, 8x minus x squared. Then to finish, you would rewrite most of it the same. And I'll again be using this lightning bolt to show you where most people would stop if they forgot about the chain rule. Um, and then to finish, you'd say times this derivative um, of 8x minus x squared is 8 minus 2x. So what I'd like to do in this video is to help you understand why do we need this chain rule? Why do we have to go past the lightning bolt? Because um, it kind of seemed like we were done. Um, but we have to multiply by d dx of the box. In order to see why we have to do this, I'm going to do a couple things. First, I'll define the box as a variable m, so that now we have three variables, x, m, and y. And in this story, we're going to say that you are running a race. And in this race, the variable x is going to represent the number of hours that you've been running for. It's going to be a long race. M will represent the number of miles that you've run so far. We'll come back to Y. Let's start with the relationship between M and X. We've defined M to equal this box, so M equals what was in the box. 8X minus X squared. We can use this equation now to build a table of values. Let's say we want to know how many miles you've gone so far after zero hours of running, after one hour, after two hours. And so we're just going to plug in zero for x in this equation, 8 times 0 minus 0 squared. And we get that after zero hours you've gone zero miles, which makes sense because the race hasn't started yet. After one hour, if you type this into a calculator, you've gone seven miles. And after two hours, you've gone 12 miles. Let's bring in the variable y. I'm going to let y equal dollars in this word problem. So you're running the race for charity. Let's say Habitat for Humanity. You've got a donor who's going to be giving you money based on how many miles you ran. But instead of just doing it the usual way, where there's a constant number of dollars you get for each mile, based on our original equation, we've got y equals this box squared. That's, that is to say, y equals m squared. It looks like your donor is paying you in a creative way, taking the number of miles you've run, and then squaring that to see how many dollars you get for the Habitat for Humanity. This allows us to extend our table of values y equals m squared, so at the beginning we've gone zero miles, zero squared gives us zero dollars. We haven't made any money yet, but we also haven't done any work yet. We go on, and after one hour we've gone seven miles. The number of miles squared is then seven squared, which is forty-nine dollars. After two hours we've gone twelve miles, so we'll take twelve squared and find that we've raised $144 for the Habitat for Humanity at that point. Let's draw a line here. So let's say you keep running and it hits two and a half hours. You've gone 13.75 miles, which means you've raised 13.75 squared which equals about $189. But at this point, you're in excruciating pain. You feel like you're going to die. 
your legs might give out, um, you're wondering whether it might be a good time to give up and stop running. Um, because maybe there's some other way you could make money. You seem to be going slower and slower. You're probably not even bringing that much money in anymore. Maybe you should get a job at a restaurant. Hustle for tips. Is it really worth the pain that you're going through right now? You want to know, at this instant, at two and a half hours into the race, what is the rate of change, the number of dollars per hour that you are making for Habitat for Humanity? And because you love calculus, you know that to find an instantaneous rate of change, you want to take a derivative. But we have two equations. Which one should we take a derivative of? You want to know how many dollars you're making per hour, so it's got to have to do with dollars. The y must be involved. So why don't we take our derivative of this equation down here. It'll be called dy over dm because y is isolated in terms of m. The derivative of y with respect to m, the derivative, in other words, of m squared, is 2m. But what we really want to know is what is the derivative right now, at this moment, two and a half hours into the race, 3.75 miles in after you've raised $189. And so to figure out the derivative right now, we're going to plug in whatever m is right now, m is the number of miles, which means that we take 2 times 13.75, and that comes out to 2750. 2750 what, though? Is that the hourly rate? Is this 2750 dollars per hour? That's a decent hourly rate, maybe not worth the excruciating pain, but if you think it's dollars per hour, you're actually mistaken. Because the derivative we found, dy over dm, the numerator units um, should be in y, which is dollars. But the denominator, dm, m is measured in miles. So it's not dollars per hour. It's dollars per mile. Which is interesting to know you're making $20 to $7.50 per mile at this moment. But it's not enough to figure out how many dollars per hour we're making. So we have to go to the other equation take a derivative there. This will be called dm over dx. And the derivative here is 8 minus 2x. Again, we're interested in right now. So we plug in the info for right now. 8 minus 2 times, the x here is 2.5. When you simplify this, you get 3. 3 what? dm over dx tells us that the units should be in miles per hour. So you're making $27.50 per mile and you're traveling at 3 miles per hour, which is a little more like walking than running, so you're really getting tired. I'm going to clear some space by cutting out most of the table. So to figure out the dollars per hour, we need to use both derivatives that we found. We found $27.50 per mile and we're going at 3 miles per hour. If you multiply those together, the miles cancel, and you get our answer, $82.50. That's in dollars per hour. Now let's tie this back to when we took the derivative using the chain rule early on. We really want to know now, at the 2.5 hour mark, what is this derivative? So we plug in 2.5 for x. And this becomes 2750 times 3, which is familiar to us. 2750 was the dollars per mile in our word problem. 3 was the miles per hour. If you stop at that lightning bolt, you're only getting the dollars per mile or the dy over dm, you have to continue and multiply by dm over dx so that those dms cancel out, just like the miles canceled out. If you stop at the lightning bolt, you have found a derivative, but it's the derivative of y with respect to m, with respect to the box, when you wanted dy dx.
And that's a little taste of why we need the chain rule.